Trapped by the belief that I'm not good enough, bound by the limitations and the lies that consumed my world, this was me. It wasn't until I took the biggest leap in my life to know and trust the power within. And it was at that moment I made a choice. My past will not define me anymore. Hello, I am Terry Cardula, and I know I am not alone in this. Over the years, I have found that the number one mistake that we make is that we get in the way of our own success story. Yes, I said it. On this show, together we'll tackle limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, getting stuck, fear, doubt, overwhelm, and the imposter syndrome. Join us on this journey designed to transport you beyond your limitations to a world where anything is possible. This is Talking with Terry. Hello, and welcome back to Talking with Terry, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And today's guest is an exceptional being, and I can't wait for you to listen to what he has to share. Bob Berg is a sought after speaker at um, company leadership and sales conferences on topics at the core of his go-giver books, which I have right here, right? I just love your books. Um, along with your endless referrals books, he's also written um, a adversaries into allies, along with some other books. His total book sales are well over a million copies. Congratulations. That's a huge um, impact that you're having. The American Management Association named Bob one of the most 30 most influential leaders, and he's one of Inc.'s 100 great leadership speakers. Richtopia named him one of the top 200 most influential authors in the world. And you, my friends, get to listen in. Welcome, Bob, to the show. Hey, thanks, Terry. So great to be with you. Yeah. So we actually connected and, and, and met at an event here in Denver years ago. We actually yeah. um, know a, a mutual friend that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's great to have you and have you here just to share some of your wisdom. So at, I always ask people, um, just right out of the gate, just how... Just give us a short bio or a short, you know, like a 30 second, if you will. Um, uh, just how did you come to be where you're at today? Yeah, uh, I began as a broadcaster, was not very good at it, graduated into sales, knew nothing about sales. So I got books and back then tapes and went to seminars and I learned and I applied and, and did well and um, eventually worked my way up to sales manager of another company, started sharing with others what was working for me. Uh, started to see that I could perhaps make a living as a speaker. And as they used to say on Seinfeld, yada, yada, yada. 30 years <laughs> later, you and I are talking uh, to a whole bunch of nice people. I love it. So tell us, um, in your journey of becoming this, you know, hugely influential, um, recognized brand, um, incredible speaker, what were some of the challenges or barriers that you had to overcome in that journey? Uh, well, I mean, I think question, by the way, I, well, but I mean, I think self-confidence. Yeah. You know, can, can I really do it? What gives me the right to be here doing this? Are people going to listen to me? Am I going to communicate in a way that actually helps, makes a difference? Uh <laughs> Again, am I good enough to do this? Do I, you know, I mean, all these yeah. things, fears. I mean, our human beings, we have fears. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, I think worthiness always, I don't know, always for me, you know, it, it yeah. figures in and, and we've got to be able to, uh, to, despite those feelings, move ahead and work through yeah. them. Yeah. You know, and I see, and I see a lot of some of the, the the individuals I work with are highly achieving, um, highly motivated women entre entrepreneurs. And you, you know, it's, it's amazing to see, and I have not yet met an individual that has not gone into business and not been, um, I don't know, uh, what's the word I want to use? They've all been impacted by some sort of, like you were saying, confidence, worthiness, it's almost like that layer of like imposter syndrome of like, you right. know, am I really, am I, am I, am I really contributing? Am I really making a difference? Who am I? Like, right. The, those, those stories that get in our head and they can be powerful stories. They can, oh. and a lot of times they hold us back. So what were some of the things that you found helpful in your journey um, early on in your career um, that supported you to move through that? 
Well, I think understanding that I did have a, a certain skill set, you know, I, when I first started, it was really uh, speaking about cultivating referral business and being able to cultivate relationships where people could would know you, like you, trust you, want to do business mm -hmm. with you, want to refer you to others, which is something I was able to do. So, so on a on an intellectual level, I knew I could do it. That I I did have a right to be there it was the emotional part that you know yeah. you, you question yourself, but uh, and and so I, I think it was a matter of coming to grips with yeah, I do know what I'm talking about. Boom, I'm going to go out there and do it and work past you know work past the fear. So really it's, it's about taking action, right? Just, I know it it's is. there, I know it's there. It's, it's calling my name, but I'm making a, ch I'm making a conscious choice, yeah. right? I'm making a conscious choice to move past that. Um, just recently I had something that came up for me and it kind of, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that it's like, oh, I really didn't see that one coming. <laughs> and you know, what it, what it re reflected for me is like, okay, I have a conscious choice, right? How I show up, how mm -hmm. I respond, how I react, how I do all of that has an impact, right? And so I made the conscious choice to say, you know what, I'm going to find the gifts in this. I'm going to, you know, you know, you know, see myself, you know, and work through this piece. And, and again, it's, a, it's, it's, I think comes back to that mindset of, you know, we have a choice at the end mm -hmm. of the day, we have a choice on how we show up and how we respond yep. to what's going on. And we all have it. And what I, I want the listeners to hear is that we all suffer or have suffered from this at mm -hmm. some point in our career um, or in our you know entrepreneurial journey. Um, so you're, you're spot on right there. I might worry more about the person who never has experienced it. <laughs> right. You well, I have not met that it. person yet. Um, yeah, I I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I, I think there, you know, I think there are some, um, but I don't think they realize that they may not come off as effectively Mm. They think they do. You know what I'm saying? In in different what? areas, because I'm yeah. it, it, because there's really no. You know, it's like what's that? I'm trying to think of that saying that the people who who uh, think they don't know, who think they don't know enough, are typically the ones who know a lot because they're so uh, anxious to make sure they know enough. Right. They're the person who already think they know thinks they know it all probably knows less. They just think that, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Yeah. That makes it, that's a great point, right? Like you're absolutely right. I, I find that I've, all the folks that I've ever met and come in contact with, they're always on this like personal journey of learning more, you know, and, and, and diving in. And I think, you know, I think that's um, part of the kind of the curiosity, right. And just how do I, how do I continue to grow myself so that I can serve more people? And yeah. how can I be a bigger contribution? And the more I know, the more I can support, right? Yeah, and I wanna make sure that I didn't just communicate some, uh, miscommunicate something. Confidence is a great thing. Yeah. Okay, it's, but it's having confidence based on having done the work, you know, based on having worked on yourself, based on preparation, based on learning what you didn't know that you thought you knew, right? Uh, yeah. The kind of confidence when the person really doesn't know or hasn't worked on that's arrogance. That's not confidence. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can, arrogance can fake their way a little bit through. Okay. Right. Uh, we've certainly seen that many times uh, in our lives. I mean, that's just, you know, part of how things are, but it tends to not be really sustainable. Great point. Yeah. Yes. Whereas confidence is, is, is different. That's and I feel like that. Of. Yeah. And I think that that self-worth and that confidence comes within, right. Mm -hmm. That is something that is growing. And there's a developmental, I feel like there's a developmental learning curve, if you will, to that. Um, because I think, and I think, I don't know about you, but for me, I can speak to is I started out in that ego spot. Like my ego was like, Whoa, like I got my business cards and I'm like, you know, like I know my stuff. Right. And then I realized over time that it was kind of a, a fake facade, if you will, around confidence. And then it's like, oh, but every time I was challenged with that, it was like, okay, I got to go in. Mm -hmm. I got to go in. And, you know, and so I feel like it was over time, you know, great. Yeah. And I think I'm still going to continue to work on all of this, you sure. know, we got, you know, we, we all, I would think, you know, it's a, it's a, a work in progress for, for all of us. Yeah. So what do you feel like has been, um, I don't know your, um, I actually, you know, what? kind of, I'm going to say this, even in the backdrop of where we're at today, right. I know that there's a lot of um, business owners, um, 
you know, a lot of individuals that are faced with fear. I mean, fear, let's be real. Like, I feel like this, this pandemic has been, um, has brought to the forefront, this concept of fear, right. On all levels, on all, you know, um, you know, dimensions, if you will. So how have you, um, I always like to ask this question, like, how have you turned fear into your greatest light? How have I turned fear into my greatest light? You know, I think it's a, it's a wonderful question. And, and I think, you know, to the degree that we can work past our fear, whenever we do, we do turn it into to light, which I don't think, again, I don't think that means denying that fear. Yeah. Okay? I think it means acknowledging it and then, you know, working within it. How many, how many sayings, you know, have we heard along that line? Mark Twain is, is credited with saying that courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery of it. Yeah. You know, my yeah. dad always said, uh, uh, who is a brave person and then said that person who's smart enough to be afraid and still do their job. And yeah. so I think any time that we have fear and that we work through it, I think by the very nature of the thing that turns it into, into light. Yeah. That's beautiful. By the way, was that your puppy in the background? It, it, it is. I'll, I'll let oh, him bring, Rick. come on camera oh, and say hi, hello. Oh, so hi, buddy. I, I will say, oh. I will say, he's a miniature Dosh Hound. And I, I will hi. say, I thought oh, it worked on oh, a little communication oh. thing. Hi, right baby. Now. Say hi to Uncle Bob. Hi, Uncle Bob. Hi, um, I thought we worked out this really clear communication with him that he was going to stay down inside of in front of the little treat that I got him in front of the fireplace. But he, that's not, that's he made himself welcome to our conversation. <laughs> 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 he's, he's all about the 15 minute fame. Um, so, <laughs> um, and so how have you been dealing with um all that because I think a lot of times um, this has been sh this has been true for a lot of people is showing how you know we have you know a lot of people are saying talking about pivoting their businesses and you know um, you know really changing and shifting the way in which they've done business mm -hmm. um, kind of on the backdrop of you know what we're experiencing in this day and time in our life. So how have you um, been doing this? Well, I've been I've been luckier than most in the sense that, you know, at, at 62 and a half years old, years of age, what have you, uh, I have really over the last few years made a, made a, a concerted effort to uh, get off the road more anyway. Yes. So I've been doing less and less outside of Florida, you know, to get on a plane. I just don't, I never really liked traveling. That was never the, the fun part of my job. Mm -hmm. I love my, I have just felt blessed for the last 30 years to be doing what I do, but the yeah. traveling part was never something I enjoyed. I enjoyed everything else, just not the, yeah. not the travel. So I'd been doing that anyway. So, so when the pandemic hit and things were getting closed down, many of my colleagues, I mean, it had a whole year's worth of, of income, just boom, what, you know, yeah. like, uh, I really didn't. So it, and, and so what I have done is I've, I've now decided, and I did make the decision that even after this, this uh, thing is over, uh, I'm still not going to travel anymore. I've just, uh, you know, I had been cutting it down to 20 times a year. Now it's zero a year. I'm not getting yeah. on a plane. I, I am going to do, and I have been already doing some uh, uh, keynote talks at conferences virtually, and I'll still do those from now on, even if after this ends, if they're, you know, if they're doing that, which I think they will start, start having more of those. But yeah. so, so in this case, it really wasn't something where I got, you know, hit as badly as, and I feel so badly for not only the other speakers, but everyone who's, who's had Especially, the stress of having yeah. through this horrible situation. Yeah. And I, I would agree with you, you know, um, I own two companies. And so one of them, we just did it with 72 hours. We made a quick pivot and went virtual and the other company has always been virtual. Mm -hmm. So it really wasn't, like you said, I wasn't impacted by it as much, but, um, I, my heart just goes out. I just, oh. uh, this weekend, I just found out that this company, um, a brick and mortar company that just, I love in our town and has been here for, I feel like ever, um, just close its doors and, oh. I just, it's so heartbreaking, you know? Um, and I just have to, I have to be in a place of saying that, you know, there's some, there's some greater good that's, that's coming out of it, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's one of these things where, you know, again, that's, you know, part of, uh, I guess, part of, uh, 
uh, of faith, whether whether religious or not, it doesn't matter. But just having yeah. faith that that eventually, yes, we'll recognize the purpose and what the thing. But at the time, it stinks. You it know, stinks. And I mean, it's terrible. And, yeah. You know, and and I you know I say to people, don't you know, don't do the oh this is good because you know we'll find out later if if and why it was good. Right now yeah. we need to. Uh, and and my suggestion is this, we control what we can control and we try as best as possible to not be attached to that which we can't control. Easier said than done, of course. Right. Something we always have to continue to, to work on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. I've, I've been having a lot of conversations of, of just like releasing the outcomes because I think sometimes... Right now, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I have a lot of people that are saying, okay, after the election, after the election, and like, I think there's gonna be like some like rainbows or magic unicorns or something that comes down and like takes, a, right. takes away this or after, you know, after, you know, um, New Year's Eve, right? And so I feel like we have kind of these like false summits that we're setting ourselves up for. Right. Um, and if we can, if we can as much as possible, you know, bless and release, right? Mm -hmm. And um, really detach from, the outcome. Yes. And I think this is like the beautiful lesson that's being learned in all of this is, you know, detach from that outcome. And because we don't know, you know, and um, we are, we are, I think a lot of us are growing, you know, um, on a spiritual level. I, mm -hmm. I always kind of incorporate spirituality into some of the, the conversations that I have, but, you know, just having that, you know, going deeper within right. and having those, um, you know, you know, conversations with ourselves and how do we how do we increase our faith and just believe and trust that mm -hmm. this is going to have a a positive outcome you know yeah. one one book i would suggest for people that they get and it's it's made a big difference in in my life and in in many others uh it's by um uh, michael singer called uh, the untethered soul mm. uh yes. also he has another one um, called the surrender experiment. Surrender not meaning giving up. It means, yeah. it means using attachment to outcomes. Basically. Letting go, yeah. Those two books, and you can get the audio and the, the books, I have both, um, are just beautiful for anyone to get, to dive into, to read, to listen to. And I'll tell you, if you're, you know, if you're going through difficult times in this pandemic emotionally, as well as, you know, other ways, I, I can't stress enough those two books and or uh, audios would be just fantastic to listen to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the recommendation. And so there's, there's, by out. the way, there's no one who I've recommended these two who, who read or listened to them that didn't come back later and just thank me Pass. to all of them for recognizing. Yeah. Them. Some, have some epiphanies through it. Yeah. Great suggestions. So what's next for you? What, what is on your plate? What is What are you celebrating? What are you, um, you know, what's, what's next for you? Well, my, my business partner, uh, the brilliant Kathy Tejanel, she and I uh, have a couple of different things that we do. One is um, we have a certified go-giver speaker uh, uh, program in which people license the uh, information that I've developed over 30 years and so forth. Uh, and we teach them how to be professional speakers and, and so forth. So we've been growing that over the last few years and are continuing to, and we have a lot of fun with that. Uh, I have a new online course, relatively new. It's been out for a little while called Endless Referrals, The Go-Giver Way. Oh, so, uh, yeah, so, I'll, you know, we're, we're doing all those things. And, and, uh, and that's really as I, uh, and I'll can, again, I'll continue to speak, but they'll be virtual. Uh, and yeah, we just, you know, we have fun with it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I love it. So what would you, um, any other like nuggets or, um, you know, tips for our listeners um, that are in their business and in, and maybe they're at various levels of their business, you know, from getting started and a lot of businesses have been, you know, mm -hmm. started during the pandemic from sure. people that have, you know, made the pivot, if you will, and transform their business in some sort, any um, words of wisdom? You know, I, I, I always go back to something I learned about, uh, gosh, probably close to 40 years ago after I'd been in sales for a couple of years. And I, you know, I've been doing fairly well, but I was with a, another, I had just started with another company and it was a, a high ticket item. And I was really in a slump and I was panicking. <laughs> and the more I panicked, the more I focused on myself, which is the, the exact opposite, right? Of, of what right. 
And I remember it was a, I, I came back to the office one day after not having the sale happen. And, and I must have had a disgusted look on my face and disgusted at myself. And I remember there was a, a much older guy at the office who he was not in the sales department. I think he was in the engineering department or something. And he, he soon retired. I didn't know him very well. But he uh, was a, a, one of these guys. He didn't say much. But whenever he did, it was pretty much always profound. You know, the, yeah, those kind of yeah. And I remember he, he said to me, Berg, he was a last name kind of guy. He said, Berg, can I give you some advice? Because I think he saw me sort of as Joe, right? Who I would write about with John David. Mann right, yeah. Later in the go-game, I right? Love it. Yeah. Uh, upcoming, ambitious, aggressive, good guy, but whose focus was really not in the right place, right? Yeah. And he, he said, can I give you some advice? I said, yeah, please do. I, I need it. And he said, you know, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. Your target is serving others. Yeah. Now, when you hit the target, he said, you'll get a reward. And right. that reward will come in the form of money. And you can yeah. do with that money, whatever you choose. But never forget, he said, the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. It ain't the target itself. Your target is serving others. Yeah. And that's when it really hit me that great salesmanship is never about the salesperson. Great yeah. salesmanship is never about the product or service, as important as those are. Yeah. Great salesmanship is about the other person. It's about those people whose lives you choose to touch. It's about those people whose lives become better just as a result of you being part of it. And I think that when we switch our focus, we move our focus yeah. off of ourselves from that I focus or me focus onto that other focus, looking yeah. for ways to bring value to their lives. Now we're heading in the right direction and we're creating that benevolent context for success. Yeah. yeah. And just like the concept that you talk about in your book, and if you have not read his books, either The Go-Giver, which is, I feel like it, it is a must have for any business entrepreneur. Um, but the go, go the go giver sells more also a, an epic read as well. Um, but you're talking about, yeah, I think that's, it's a brilliant concept of, you know, that, that money will come, you know, that that's the law of reciprocity, right. Coming when you're here to, to add value at be of service to other people. And it becomes, I feel like, um, sales becomes with ease, you know, sales yeah. with ease, right. Yeah. And, you know, we need to make sure we're receptive, that we tap into that law of receptivity that says the key to effective giving is to stay open to yeah. receiving, which means really nothing more than, yeah, you breathe out, but you also have to breathe in. Yes. Right? We breathe out carbon dioxide, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out, which is giving, yes. and we breathe in, which is receiving. Yes. Two sides of the very same coin. And I think there's a lot of women, um, especially, um, I, I don't know, I, I'm going to say women because I feel like there's a lot of women out there that we are such great givers, give, 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 give. And I literally was speaking on stage last Saturday and um, I, was, I was talking about this, you know, being open to receive because when we do, and it's, and it's the little things from receiving, right? If someone treats us to a cup of Joe, exactly. right? Exactly. Is it's, 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 instead of saying, oh, no, thank you. I got this. It's right. just saying yes. Thank you. Yeah. And saying yes to more, even though, you know, and, and it, I feel like it just works that muscle, right? And we, the more yeah, we can yeah, work exactly. the muscle. Exactly. And then when we have the bigger opportunities that come towards us, we can actually see them, right? Versus, because I think sometimes they're out of our like conscious awareness because we don't even, right. we haven't even taught ourselves you know, that muscle to say, yes, that's great. When someone right? pays you a compliment, do you say, oh, no, no, no. Or do you say, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. because remember, you've got that to, basic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and I, I love what you said about it being a muscle, right? We call yeah. it the receptivity muscle. And you've got to be able to accept a check for $250 before you can accept the check for $25,000. Yes. It yes. also means when you really walk in your value, you don't undercharge. You yes. don't underprice. You don't allow yourself to be negotiated down. Uh, of course, you you are able to present. You learn how to present your 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 product or service, the benefits, and and the connecting with what they need, want, and desire in a way that you're able to build that value. 
yeah. but it also means that you understand your value. You walk in your value mm -hmm. and you charge accordingly because you're not selling on price. You're right. selling on value. Mm -hmm. and, and I think key. that, yeah, I think that comes with that development of that confidence too, exactly. right? It's True. kind of like a parallel process where my, my confidence in what I have to offer is mm -hmm. also meeting, you know, the value that I bring of and course, recognizing absolutely. that. That's a wonderful point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So this has been delightful. Thank you so much. If you have not reached out and, and, and grabbed his stuff, it is gold. Like it is just Thank yummy. So yeah. we will put that information into the show notes um, to grab a copy of his books, some, some um, links. So share with the audience real quick, just how they can get more of your goodness here. <laughs> Thank you. Very kind. Uh, really the best place to go is Berg, B-U-R-G dot com. There's everything there about books and other resources and where you can connect with me on social media and er everything's there. Berg, B-U-R-G dot com. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for, you know, hopping on this call today with us and thank you for what you, what massive contributions you've been to the world. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, yeah. it's an honor to know you and get to know you better here. So thank you so much. The honor is mine. Thank you. I am so grateful that you joined me for this episode. If you've enjoyed this, then there's just one thing that I would like you to do. Click to subscribe and leave me a rating and review. As my way to thank you, let's connect for a free consultation. Just reach out to me at talkingwithterry, that's T-E-R-I dot com to book your time.